Hey everyone, I'm Jay. And I'm Sean. And we watched a movie. Yeah. Yeah, we watched two actually we're gonna tell you about today. Oh. Two that have pretty similar descriptions. So the first is called Ejexi. Um, so the description is a comedy about what can happen when you love your phone more than anything else. That one was available on Amazon Prime. And Almost Love, uh, also known by Sell By, alternate title there. This one is described as an ensemble comedy about romance in the era of smartphones. Hmm. Uh, that one is available on Netflix. Um, I liked one and I hated one. How about you? Well, I definitely hated Jaxie. Okay. <laughs> That's terrible. Well, let's start with that one, okay. shall we? Yeah. So, um, this one had been available to rent for some time, and we are in the pandemic drought of moviedom. Uh, there are very few new releases happening, and I kept staring this one in the face, and Adam Devine just It was kept Adam Devine's face. Back. Yeah. That's the problem yeah. for me. I just don't like that guy. No, he's annoying. He's That's so his thing. annoying. He's so, but his thing is being annoying, but he's so annoying. He's so annoying. That you don't want to watch a movie with him. I man. don't. Like I don't he, either. Maybe in small doses, if he is cast as a person I'm allowed to hate, maybe then. Yeah. But that's it. Yep. Like, I really struggle with this guy. And on Jexy, it's all him. It's all him. All the time. Yes. So this one is written and directed by John Lucas and Scott Moore. Um, it is available on Amazon Prime, uh, at least in Canada, which is why we finally watched it because it didn't cost anything except my soul. <laughs> so not worth it. <laughs> I'm glad you made that determination. <laughs> I appreciate your little vote of confidence oh, there. Thanks. So we've got uh, Adam Devine playing this guy, Phil, who is obsessed with his phone. Yes, he is. Although everyone is. In real life or in this no, movie? No, in this movie. Okay. But, I mean, not Kate. Oh, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we've gone too far already. Yeah. So right. here's Phil. He wants to be a journalist. He actually writes listicles. Which is It's not at BuzzFeed. Journalism. Yeah. But... But it is. But it is. His boss, played by Michael Pena, and here, oh, here's strike number one. We click on this thing finally after months of avoidance, and suddenly Michael Pena comes out of nowhere. Rose Byrne comes out of nowhere, and I'm like, wait a minute, did I like this movie this whole time, and I accidentally avoided a good movie? No. no. <laughs> uh, and Michael Pena, I mean. The character was annoying. There are yeah. very few people to like in this movie, oh, I have absolutely. to say. Yeah, I mean, Michael Pena <laughs> seems to be trying to out Adam Devine, Adam Devine. Uh, yeah, a little bit. A little, he does out obnoxious him. Oh, absolutely. I mean, does. I don't hate him as much because it's still Michael Pena versus right. Adam Devine. But anyways, he's the boss at this not BuzzFeed journalism for <laughs> 2020 place. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and occasionally people think he's, that Phil is okay, yeah. and he gets invited to some stuff. Yeah, like kickball. But um, he doesn't go, because he's got a hot date with his cell phone. Yeah, it's And weird. literally, like, he sits in his apartment, he orders the same thing every night through his phone, he's watching videos on his phone, he's, whatever, everything is on his phone. Yeah. I mean, they've got him there. He, uh, I can't believe that they never even tried to kill him in traffic, the way he's mm -hmm. always watching his phone. No, they only like, tried to I kill was... him in traffic with a car. <laughs> That's right. It was very ironic. <laughs> um, <laughs> good old-fashioned car accident. <laughs> Come on. Uh, this guy, really? Anyways, he breaks his phone one day. It's practically a travesty. He, he literally runs into a girl, a named pretty Kate. girl, named Kate, played by Alexander Ship. She's lovely, she's luminous, uh, he does not see that whatsoever, doesn't even see if she's alright because his phone, his precious phone, is smashed into three distinct pieces. Um, 
And here's another strike. Wanda Sykes. Wanda Sykes one of my the... true loves yeah. in the world, Wanda Sykes, is like the cell phone store employee when he be like brings it in on a stretcher practically. Like <laughs> my phone, save my phone, and she can't. No. It turns out, I don't know if like three pieces is like eh. Whatever it is, there was no coming back for this phone. Well, and she wanted her commission. Well, yeah, sure. But as deeply, like, uh, aggrieved as he was, he was also, like, instantly mollified by a new phone. A new phone. Which is, you know, c a complex relationship. Yeah, To is. love it so much and also find it so, not just replaceable, but, like, phone culture really is about constantly upgrading to one. a new phone, yeah. right? So he gets the newest of the new phones and turns it on and a lovely voice that sounds, gosh, an awful lot like Rose, Rose Byrne. Uh, but she calls herself Jexy. Jexy. And this is the new oh, operating uh, yes, yeah. system of his phone, who's going to just transform his life and make it better. Um, she doesn't. She do well, I mean, I mean, it depends your perspective. Yeah. She certainly believes she's done a, oh, an she's excellent trying. job. Yeah. Um, her fatal flaw, though, and this is when you know it's a bug and not a feature, is that she falls in love with Phil. So clearly this woman has only ever been one person's phone. <laughs> yeah. uh, classic mistake, but never marry the first guy your phone's with. <laughs> um, God. <laughs> so she thinks he's all that, and so he just starts to sabotage his life. Yes. So this really, um, it's like, it starts out kind of like her, you know, that Joaquin Phoenix movie where he falls in love with his operating system played by Scarlett Johansson. A really great movie. Yeah, it is. And this movie made me want to watch that movie. Right. And it made me wish that I was watching it instead of this one the whole time. But we had to see this thing through. So it starts out like her. Well, you knew how it was gonna end. I know. I mean, <laughs> it it transforms over into like 2001 space. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Uh, it just it goes hell. It yeah. starts with her and it goes to hell yeah. real quick. Um, which we always know the robots are always gonna come for us. Yeah. Like, like that's how it is. We that's know every this. movie. Don't, don't Every say we AI were warned. Movie. We were amply warned. We already know. The AIs themselves are saying that <laughs> yes. this is what will happen. The AI that wrote this movie knows that it's going to happen. <sighs> yeah. So that's Jexy. It is predictable. It is boring. It's pretty superficial. And it's not funny. It's really not funny. That's the thing. I mean, your descriptor is one line. You put comedy right in there. I did expect to laugh. Yeah. And we didn't. No. We really didn't. So over to Almost Love. So that one is on Netflix. This is a romance in the smartphone era, you may recall. I do recall, and I mean that tagline is really I don't remember any phones being Well, no, I think that's a, it just means it's, it's a just modern, the modern romance. thing. Okay. That's what I had to really come to grips with was Phones are always there because yeah. they are always there in our life too. I never know where mine is. It's usually in the bathroom, but I can never find <laughs> it. Um, but like most people who are better at life than I am have their phone almost constantly. True. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I don't mean that like in Phil in Jesse way. I, I find it demeaning when people are so down and like, oh, you're obsessed with your phone. And it's like, well, my phone does literally phone everything, does everything for me. Yeah. You try living without it. Yeah. Because um, not many of us do. No. Well, not many of us can. And why would we want to? It's a miracle worker in yeah, your pocket. Right. For God's sakes, embrace it. Um, so these people all have phones. They're occasionally using their phones, but they aren't obsessed with their phones because they're real life people. I mean, not really, it's fictional characters, but you know what I mean. That's what they're going they're for. They're a little more grounded. Yes. So it is an ensemble of friends that we meet, and they're all having varying degrees of success in love. Um, so first there is Adam and Marklin. So um, they are in love, but they're at a weird 
place in the relationship where they've been mm-hmm. together for Kinda I stuck. think a couple of years. Yeah. But is marriage on the table? Well, not for nobody Adam. really wants yeah. to bring it up. There's an income inequality that seems to it's a wrangle problem. a little yeah. bit. Well, and again, I think the problem is Adam. Mostly. Okay, so Adam played by the absolutely adorable Scott Evans. In this film, he is playing an art, not a forger, no. an, like a ghost writer, yeah. but for art. Yeah. Which I did not know was a thing, but I didn't it either. makes sense, I suppose, yeah. because I know people do ghost write them. Scott Patterson has not lived in a pen in years. James Patterson. Okay, that's right. Scott Patterson is from Gilmore Girls. <laughs> oh. And as far as I know, he doesn't write either. <laughs> so don't correct me. I'm probably right. You're probably right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, dear. I, I find it funny that you can even like catch the nonsense that I say. <laughs> I'm listening. I know you're listening. I just can't believe you like even bother processing it. <laughs> just be like, well, she'll be quiet eventually. Um, so Marklin, his boyfriend, uh, seems to be like a. A super An influencer, influencer, yes, and makes a lot of money doing it, yeah. very carefully curating his Instagram page. Yeah, I didn't get it. Well, <laughs> big surprise. Yeah, it's true. Um, <laughs> like, how is this a job? <laughs> the other guy's got an actual talent. He's yes. a painter. And we do know that when they were first together, it was switched. That what that Scott was supporting. No, that Adam um, was supporting Mark Marklin. Marklin. I just want to put Scott Peterson in somewhere, somewhere so yeah. bad, guys. We'll I miss him. <laughs> um, so, Marklin played by Augustus Pearl. So, they're couple number one. We know him. We like him. They're struggling a bit. Yeah, they're having a hard they're time. They're having a hard time. Uh, then we meet Cammy and Haley, who are not a couple, just a couple of best gal pals. Uh, Cammy, played by the lovely Michelle Buteau who I have seen in a lot of movies, including the one we just watched, Work It. Work It. Um, but in everything else, she's been like a very, not a throwaway character, but she's been a very small part. But I would kind of call her a scene stealer. Yeah. I'm drawn to her, so I was really glad to get to spend more quality time with her in this. So she plays a woman who has recently discovered that um, she has almost no deal breakers. Like the situation, the romantic situation has gotten so dire in New York City that she has resorted to fucking a homeless person. <laughs> um, so Henry, the homeless person, played by Colin Donnell, uh, I mean, is he cute? I don't know. Honestly, I felt real bad for Cammy because he was just kind of also a mean person. So, he, yes. I mean, I feel like <laughs> he the wasn't like a dirty. Thing. No, it's not you know, even about the homeless thing. What, like he, he lived in a shelter. He yeah. it was clean uh, enough. Um, hungry. He was pretty hungry. He did eat a lot, he yeah, lot. but I could relate to that. Yeah, you do eat like <laughs> a homeless do, person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, he was not a nice person. He wasn't and I was a like, nice guy. It maybe wasn't a good homeless match. is not the deal breaker, but no. something here should have yeah. been. They, they weren't good together. No, but he, I think he was a genuine bad person. I will, I um, will take that. Anyways, Haley, her best friend, played by the lovely Zoe Chow, um, who's also in a lot of stuff. Got a, yes, yeah. that's right. A bit of a romantic predicament because she is a tutor uh, of high school students, and the one in particular has a huge crush on her, and she seems to have feelings of love she for him. She is kind of into it. I mean, her friend Cammy, and thank God for Cammy. I mean, it's. I mean, she's comfortable telling Cammy about this, which is surprising. Uh, but Cammy is like, you know what? I think maybe those are like motherly feelings of love, or you know, big sisterly feelings of love. But it's hard to tell because the kid. He knows what really kind of love he has. Yes. He could use a dance belt or two. Yeah. <laughs> 
And then finally we have Elizabeth, who uh, is played by the wonderful Kate Walsh, who we were just watching in the Umbrella Academy. Yes. So I felt it hard to forgive her. <laughs> you know, I know, like, she's a little so bit bad of that in that movie. movie. Yeah, but yeah, she's good. That, yeah, oh, she's girl, really good. I love the yeah. wardrobe. Whoever does her wardrobe, oh my God, I want your life. You are so talented. The red shoes in every scene. Oh, oh, oh. Anyway, so I had to get over, you know, her being the villain and just allow her to be a woman in this movie, which she is. Which she is. Uh, a little, like, maybe the matriarch of this friends group. I'm yeah, I would say. I'm quite sure how she fit in. It's but a weird, like, it's an interesting group. It is You're an interesting kind of like, mix. like, how did these people all find yes, each other? Yes, and it does seem like, you know, these two are friends, but you don't really know the couple, the, right. you know, the boyfriend as well. So it's, you know, we don't get the whole back, backstory. We're just thrown in at this moment in time when everyone is struggling and Elizabeth's role in the group um, seems to have been almost as a the mascot for love <laughs> you know she and her husband have been together 15 years which seems miraculous to everyone else who just can't get their shit together and yet her and her husband Damon have been held up as this perfect example of a marriage um, and don't even get attached to Damon because it turns out, uh, A, he has no screen time whatsoever, but <laughs> more importantly, they're getting a divorce. Yeah. Which is hard. Like, when everybody's yeah. already struggling and now the only example of a good relationship that you have is gone kaput. It's true. They are all feeling it. I think most of the friends are feeling it worse than she is. Yeah, you know, She's that trying lost. to be brave and like, move on and move forward but everybody else is like mourning that. of course because yeah. now it's like hopeless yeah and like so. if that didn't work how am i ever gonna do yeah. it yeah how is me and the homeless guy gonna make this situation work yeah. and that guy moves in guys well like, i mean it's hard to get rid of a homeless guy i think it is i, I think mean that's... i felt a little bit of that myself at one point it's true mm -hmm. <laughs> you weren't ho homeless you just never left no because i liked you you liked being i did have my own apartment i just never used it too homed no yeah. that's true you never did i would only go back there to get like new Cards. clothes oh yeah and to do that <laughs> I, I, I like I can't believe you held it in for even like <laughs> two dates because <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah that was a little misleading. It was. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Are you though? Not really. Ah uh, yeah, it that's what out. I thought. It worked. Out. <laughs> Good thing I love you. Yeah. Anyways, I enjoyed this movie. I liked it. Um, everybody was kind of just like, you know, going through the stuff. I like that they were comfortable enough with each other to sort of share those insecurities. And I think in that way it was universal enough. Like we've all been in that place where we're like, am I the only person whose wheels are still spinning? Like, why can't I? Everybody else is settling down and I can't do it. But we all have our baggage that we bring into relationships and you know, we all live in a kind of a self-centered way where we do think it's all happening to us. But really, it's happening to everyone. It everyone is. has felt that struggle. Yes, absolutely. Except for Sean, because obviously <laughs> you just got to marry the best person in the world. Oh, right. With practically no effort and yeah. despite the farting. Yeah, you're right. I know. <laughs> but, but I remember once feeling something along those lines well we all have it yeah. just you know it is hard it's the hardest thing we ever do it's true i mean it just it feels like in a world of i don't even know seven billion people eight billion yeah. people like it should like the number should be in our favor yeah but they're really not for whatever reason it's kind of a cruel joke isn't it <laughs> <laughs> That's just that will be the tagline of the movie you can write. A cruel joke. It's a cruel joke, and then you die. Um, yeah, so I, I like to like it. It was real. It was messy. It's definitely um, You know, yeah. people are really just having to be like, here. I thought I had standards, and I see now how far they are slipping. How much I will tolerate just so I don't die alone. But here's the secret, everyone. Being alone is not so bad. It's true. I loved being alone. No offense. Then taken. I know you did. I know I did. 
I did like being single. I was very good at being single. Yes. I was having a good time. Yeah. I mean, technically, okay. as a, you know, checking boxes, I was single for a very brief time, although never legally. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I yeah. mean, life is messy. <laughs> there That's go. the box we could all check. Yeah. Was I still married when we met? Yes. yes. <laughs> that's how it goes that is how it goes and it turned out to be wonderful that's right so yeah all of these people have to find their own path and sometimes the answers are sad yeah uh, you know it is so hard to it is so hard to know when to pull the plug on a relationship one of these people will have to uh, literally decide that oh yeah yeah um, but it is hard when you don't hate the person, you know, when there's, when nothing definitive, no big traumatic event has happened. You're just feeling like this is not how love is supposed to be. Oh, but you've put in years. Yeah. You don't dislike this person. Are you just broken inside? Like, you know, it's such a... And you may have a very close group of friends who talk very openly about their relationships, but no relationship is like yours. No. You know, that's the only one. And so only the two plus people who are in it can really, can really assess. And that's really tough. I it think. is hard because you don't have that distance mm -hmm. when you're in it. It is extremely hard to know. Yeah. And there's a lot of outside forces. Like, maybe you don't want to be alone, but maybe you can't afford the rent. Maybe you're homeless. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of things, like, you know, yeah. there's a lot Lots of, of things besides just love that go into uh, how we sell f for X. But I enjoyed this one. I, uh, Mike Doyle did the writing and the director, uh, directing on this one. I thought as a director, he has a light touch. He's not trying to impress us with anything. He's just hanging out with the friends, and that was kind of cool. I liked uh, the, the vibe that Scott Evans was bringing to the role of Adam, who has a lot of, like, I think resentment that he doesn't really know how to express. So as the movie goes on, he starts getting real clumsy in the world. And I just kind of thought that was a fun way to express, like, this stuff is coming out of him physically like he yeah, can't use point. the words so he's just going to bleed huh. <laughs> like, you know he was a he was a walking mess yeah he was uh having a rough time yep um and of course i did love michelle Pateau, yeah. although you just want to give her a hug and be like what happened to you to think that this is the best you can do yes absolutely or that this is even adequate or okay yeah um of course, we really should just hug our own friends and <laughs> just pass message of hope along. Yeah. Not only could it, I mean, it can happen at any age. So it, it can happen at any time. In my experience, it happens when you're not looking for it at all. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think there's also value in just having a relationship with yourself and loving yourself and having a good time. Yeah, because then you can't lose. That's right. And that is the most important relationship you will ever have. And I think maybe there were crumbs of this in all of these relationships where really, especially between Adam and Marklin, the problem was not the relationship. The pro They each, like, one feels insecure and one feels, you know, yep. they had problems within themselves that, that made it so that they way. couldn't. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So that's an important lesson for everyone. You have to love yourself first. You have to heal yourself first. Get on that. It takes longer than you think. But yeah, we're all just out there doing our best. Yeah, we and, are. And uh, and this is that story. Yeah, Tinder does stories. not sort out the homeless. Just so you know, heads up, everyone. <laughs> it could happen to you. It could. Anyways, anyway. Jexy. We didn't like no. one. I nearly threw my phone directly into the toilet. <laughs> Just uh, in protest. Yeah. Well, <laughs> why not? Uh, almost love. It's good. We almost loved. Yeah. yeah.
it, <laughs> it's, it's worth it. Lived up to its name. Yeah. That's right. So let us know if you've seen them or how much you love your phone. <laughs> Maybe that's the relationship you should be cultivating. Maybe you should just write a really good program for it. Couldn't hurt, I that's guess. That's right. Two birds with one stone. I mean, I think all those are creepy, but two each <laughs> okay. is wrong. That's right. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye. Bye.